We talked about all the news, right? We talked about Department of Government Efficiency. We talked about the fact that Bitcoin's ripping to all-time highs on the backs of this election and other bullish news that led up to this, led up to this point. And of course, we talked about the strategic Bitcoin reserve that Trump promised when he spoke at the Nashville Bitcoin conference. I did a little video on a different channel, the K-Pod Network, and it was like a 20 minute video talking about all the different ways I personally get exposure to Bitcoin without necessarily just buying it and self-custodying the asset. That's not for everybody. I don't think everybody should self-custody their assets. So I'm gonna kind of summarize that, speed run through it, give you an idea of what you can do to get exposure to crypto. Obviously, everyone's risk tolerance is different. So I've categorized these quote unquote investments into three different buckets. One is direct exposure, one is indirect exposure, and the other is leveraged exposure, right? So DGENs, this is for you too. Let me stress the fact that I am not a trader. Okay, and you can see by this chart where I basically just doodled on trading view. And this has just kind of helped me to organize how I'm going to explain to you what I've done over the years. You don't have to copy me by any stretch, but maybe this will give you some ideas that will help you get the exposure you want to the asset. We'll talk direct exposure first. Bitcoin, the price action kind of operates in four year cycles, right? The halvening cycles, which every four years, the inflation the new Bitcoin released into circulation gets cut in half. The supply doesn't get cut in half. The inflation gets cut in half. Th there was a huge run up leading to this, this halvening. And the significance of the halvening, like I said, it's cutting the inflation in half, which means several months later, there should be a supply squeeze. Let's zoom out. Here was the last halvening. Right. And we could see a couple months of consolidation and then a huge run up this like double, triple mega top with a massive dip in the middle, super volatile after the heavening. And then Bitcoin goes through this long, boring period where nothing happens. Well, I DCA'd all of this. I was doing a daily Bitcoin buy. I wasn't even looking at the price. My life is stress free when it comes to Bitcoin. All my stress comes from altcoins. And we'll get to that. There are lots of these layer twos and side chains building in and around Bitcoin. That's the stacks token for me. There are others. And then Rune, which is the Thor chain, um, the Thor chain token. This is when I started buying these. This was September of last year. I started buying stacks. And then this was December of last year where I started accumulating Rune. I started buying ordinals, inscriptions, uh, BRC20 tokens, which I would consider super volatile, super risky, this leveraged bet on Bitcoin that may not work out for me, but I was buying. But here we are, right? We're at this point where the price is starting to go parabolic and based on history, we hope that this is just the beginning and that the, the four-year pattern will play out. I don't expect everyone that comes to my channel to be an expert in crypto, and I'm certainly not an expert myself, but you want to go the more traditional route to get exposure to Bitcoin, and there are ways that you can you can do that. And the number one way where you can get direct exposure to Bitcoin through traditional finance rails is to buy one of the many ETFs. And you could make this like 1%, 10%. I held a grayscale fund, which was not exactly like an ETF, but it was in my tax-free IRA, and I was happy to hold it despite the fees. I have since changed it over to the Fidelity uh, Bitcoin ETF, which is FBTC. I use Fidelity for my retirement accounts. There are others, right? There's iShares, there's ARK, there's Bitwise, there's Grayscale, there's 2x Bitcoin ETFs. So you can get this direct and even leveraged exposure through ETFs. You could do it in a brokerage account. You could do it. I do it in an IRA. And I'm sure that there will be a point where you can do this even in a 401k. Some indirect exposure to Bitcoin you can buy. This is Coinbase stock. And I know this is marked up. I doodled on this for another video showing all the times I bought this, um, this stock in my IRA. They're involved in trading. They're involved in custodying Bitcoins for the ETFs and other institutions. They have a venture capital wing where they invest in startups. And I feel that 
I capture all that by holding coin in my, in my IRA. What else can you do for indirect leverage exposure if you don't want to get into the world of crypto necessarily? Well, micro strategy, right? We know Michael Saylor, the CEO, he is just a massive Bitcoin bull. He's been buying Bitcoin relentlessly through MicroStrategy, his company, MSTR is the ticker, and his personal, you know, his personal holdings. This is actually correlated to the Bitcoin price, but it's much more volatile. So you're getting kind of like a leveraged play there. I think it's like 2.5, like for every percent Bitcoin moves, the MicroStrategy stock is going to move like two to three percent. It's something like that. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I'm just slapping together this video for you. But MSTR, that's the ticker. And the final way um, that I'll share with you is you can buy stocks in Bitcoin mining companies. Yes, there are a bunch and a lot of them have been around for a long, long, long time. Miners, you could think of as the infrastructure for Bitcoin and really all the activity in and around Bitcoin. That is the other way where you could get some exposure. I hope you liked that video. I hope it helped you out. I would really appreciate some comments down below if I missed anything and also would appreciate it if you could like the video, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, help a brother out. <laughs> Every quantum leap I'm finding myself trapped inside of people Differences underneath the fundamental side of ego Truly not that equal, that's why they say don't meet your heroes We are part of this evil, so pardon all my amigos